Well, what else we got to uh, talk about? What's on everybody's mind today? Anybody had any uh, interesting places to go or good boondocking? Well, <clears throat> court site's about to start. The two weekends of the show are coming up. I'm uh, My rig is in the shop, unfortunately, but I hope to get it out in time. And I think I'm going <clears> to <throat> try and meet up with Jack Wood if I can. Maybe he can give things a look over and see, you know. Yeah, well, that's what he's there for. He's uh, the road track area is just a few miles north of Quartzsite on the right hand side, and uh, uh, he you'll see them when you go north out of town. And uh, he said he's if you go in that uh, area where you see the road tracks, he should be in there at about uh, I think he told me he'd be at about a one o'clock position. He goes in a ways on the right so uh, I'm sure uh, he'd be glad to see you and you can connect with him on uh, on Facebook and, and uh, yeah he's he's down there hoping to do some road track work that's his income really so I'm sure he'll take good care of you. An interesting trip to take sometime and <clears throat> doesn't involve your road trek as much but if you camp down near Flagstaff you can go to Wilson and you can take a train that goes from Wilson right to the North Rim. And it's quite a nice train ride. It goes right through past some old volcanoes and there's basalt, basaltic rocks that spewed out in the old days and millions of years ago. And they have, you actually get robbed by, you get robbed by a bun bunch of guys on horseback when you're going through. <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite a fun ride. And you can go up just for the day to the canyon and then come back and uh, visit other places down around there, like Jerome, which is sort of an interesting place too. Yeah, Jerome is, uh, I've, I've uh, been to Jerome. It's, it's uh, uh, not for the faint of heart to go there because it's really up some steep yeah. slopes in the mountains, but it's a delightful little village and uh, we've enjoyed that. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, we'll have to put that on our bucket list to take that little train ride yeah, from uh, Wilson. Good. The um, your your uh, comment about being robbed uh, on the train uh, brings back a, an interesting memory. I was uh, at a Rotary convention in Calgary, which is uh, for those who don't know Calgary, it's a big uh, uh, ranching area and uh, uh, lots of uh, horse uh, horsemen and cattlemen there that ride horses. And we had a Rotary convention there. We had about twenty thousand. Uh, Rotary members there from all around the world and it's customary on one evening of this conference that you go for home hosting and so the local Rotary clubs and the Rotarians will invite foreign visitors uh, to their homes for dinner uh, just to share uh, the Canadian customs, let them see a Canadian meal. So this Rotary club uh, in, in Millersville which is about 20 or 30 miles uh, out of Calgary, all ranchers all own farms and have horses. So their club uh, decided to have a big barbecue on one of, on one of their members' ranches. So they, they took a busload of uh, people, a lot of people from Asia and, and Europe. So instead of uh, uh, the holdup, stopping them with horses and taking their belongings, what they did is uh, they had this all queued up with the bus driver. And as they came around a uh, curve, uh, all of these guys on horseback came out of the bushes and did a holdup of the bus. <laughs> but instead of uh, instead of taking their belongings, they gave each of us a grab bag. <laughs> they gave us something rather than take something. But but oh my goodness, oh, especially some of the Asian people. Oh, they were having a fit. They were trying to hide all their jewelry. <laughs> and uh, they got out of the bus holding their hands in the air and. Uh, they were just absolutely going frantic because they didn't realize this was all just a, uh, you know, an entertaining type exercise. And then, of course, when they brought along the gift bags and gave everybody one, everybody was so relieved. But, yeah, that was quite an interesting experience. We had already tipped off the newspaper and they had a newspaper reporter on the bus who knew what was going to happen. So it was a, a big story in the Calgary Herald newspaper the next day. <laughs> The first time I saw, the first time I saw Calgary, I was I drove, you know, from the southwest up into Canada, and after driving for a long time with seeing nothing, 
you know, all these deer running back and forth across the highway. I actually thought it was a mirage that I was seeing skyscrapers. How could this be? I'm, I'm from Manhattan originally. How, how can I be seeing skyscrapers? And it actually was a metropolis, Calgary. I couldn't believe it. You know, driving through, there were wine stores and cheese stores. I said, oh my God, I'm in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a thing to see, see it come out of the plains like that. Yeah. So, Jane, you said you're going uh, to, to Arizona in the coming t uh, short period? Yep, February. Good. Yeah, we'll probably be mostly, well, we'll be in the southern part because it's early. Um, but uh, we have some friends south of Tucson, um, and we're meeting up <laughs> with some other friends in a Class B in mid-February, mid probably the third week in February, and we're just going to explore some of the BLM land out there and um, uh, Madeira Canyon, places like that. Oh, great. Where, where are you yeah. originating from? From a very cold Vermont. It's minus 13 here right now. Okay. <laughs> there's also, uh, there's some great, uh, there's a great park uh, down near uh, Sierra Vista. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, it's in. Uh, it's a gr big pine tree park. That's uh, quite a nice spot. Lots of shade. And uh, Bisbee is another uh, town. It's an old mining town, but actually, they uh, they actually still uh, offer tours of the mine. And, yeah, the uh, copper mines. Yeah. So uh, we we've enjoyed that in the past. And uh, just south of there is a town called Douglas and uh, Agua Freda on the Mexico side. We do. We do a lot of humanitarian work there. My wife is a retired dentist, so we often go there and uh, she provides free dental service for the children in the shanty towns and stuff. Nice, nice. Yeah, um, we heard about um, Sierra Vista area and San Pedro House, which is some BLM land that's supposedly a great birding place for any of the other birders. I haven't been there yet, okay. but it's, also, it's on the list. Also, uh, if, if you have an interest, Tombstone is a big tourist attraction town. Yep. Yep. We might go all the way over to Yuma. Not sure. Um, we're really, we're, we'll be inventing this trip as we go. <laughs> yeah, it's a long old haul going over to Yuma. And it's, there's nothing much along the way. Quartzite is, ha Quartzite is halfway. Um, yeah. The other thing just south of Tucson is uh, the Titan uh, Museum installation. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know if you, you're aware of that, but uh, it's now open for tours. I'm not sure if it's operational. I don't believe it is anymore. So they have a little uh, museum uh, visitor store, and they let you go down into the uh, control rooms of uh, the Titan Missile uh, Center there. And there's a really nice... Uh, uh, Xavier uh, Church on the south side of Tucson. That's that's really quite an amazing uh, thing. It's out in a, uh, a Native Indian settlement area. A uh, really big white uh, uh, cathedral that you can see oh. from the highway. It's a really nice stop as well. Okay. Have you been over to uh, Oregon Pipe? Never National been Park? To no. Oregon. Oregon Pipe. Oregon Pipe, yeah. Yeah. I haven't been there yet. And where is that? It's uh, it's on the border, but with Mexico's, uh, south of Phoenix, southwest yeah. of Phoenix. Yeah, there's some wonderful state parks around Tucson, like Oregon Pipe and uh, Catalina. It's a state park. Hmm. It sounds like you know, just like Catalina Island, Catalina State Park, also very nice with hikes to see cactus. Very nice. Great. Actually, there's a big cactus museum on the uh, western outskirts of Tucson as well. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think it's called, the, is it called the Sonora Cactus Museum or not sure? I think sure. it is. I yeah. think it is. And then just down the, the road a mile or two from there is an old uh, western village. Uh, the movie a set. Lot of, pardon? <laughs> it's a movie set. Yeah, it's uh, but a lot of movies have been shot there. Well, anybody else got anything? Um, I took a trip back to, uh, I'm in Saskatchewan, and I took a trip back to Ontario 
over the north of Superior there. And, and, and that was just gorgeous that I did that just before COVID hit and the scenery was absolutely beautiful. So, oh, and I wanted to ask you, Doug, um, you have, um, a, what is a 2000 versatile? Yes. Dodge. Yeah, it's exactly like mine, except your tire is on the back and mine is underneath. Yeah, so uh, when, when you have a generator, the generator gets put up underneath where your spare tire is, and then oh. they put the tire out on the back. So when you see the tire out on the back, it usually says there's a generator underneath where the tire oh. would normally be. I always wondered about that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> This is uh, a trip, our, when we first bought our road truck, we have a 99 uh, Chevy 200. Um, we first bought our road truck uh, the very first year, uh, our dream trip, we took our dream trip, which was to Newfoundland. What a wonderful place to visit. If you've, if you've got the time to drive up there and take a five hour ferry ride across to the, to the rock. Uh, it, you could spend you could spend a month in Newfoundland. It's a huge island, and oh, it absolutely, is absolutely gorgeous. I, I agree. It's one of the be most beautiful provinces that we visited. Uh, we went two years ago, and we spent a couple of months there. It is unbelievable. Right. Uh, we can't wait to go back. It's it's really nice. Actually, uh, we we did a similar uh, tour on on uh, line this same way. Yeah. Well, maybe a year or two ago, I should bring that video out and post it again. Uh, uh, we did uh, we did the same sort of uh, thing as we did now. And just we're boondockers. We, I mean, we would go on a month's trip, and we might not even have a campsite. Maybe once every three or four days, depending yeah. on uh, our, whether we need a shower. Sometimes we'll stop at a truck stop and just pay five or six bucks to do a shower. Uh, sometimes we'll. We'll stop at a campground if we need a shower or if we want to dump and get water or something. Depends where we are, but we largely boondock. And uh, there's just tons of free boondocking places uh, in eastern Canada, right along the water. Just, we, as, as you, you guys have said, we just love it and we'll be going back. And I'm now noticing we've got three or four road tracker members who are uh, in Newfoundland and some of them have been posting wonderful photos of places to go. So uh, just do a search on Newfoundland if you're thinking of going there and you'll find some great spots. And as I said, there's a video. If, by the way, if you're looking for the old videos, if you're not familiar with hashtags, that's when somebody puts a term with the number sign in front. So if you go on to the, the uh, Facebook forums uh, and you put the number sign, which they call hashtag, and then Road Trek Rally, then you'll start seeing uh, the prior videos that we've had, and um, you, you can look up the various ones. I've never been to Quartzsite yet. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you guys have been there. I haven't been there, but I know a lot of people are going to be there in February. Yeah. Right. You're going there, Mike, you said? Yeah, I'm going for the RV show. Just one of the, the last, the second weekend of the RV show because my friends go so it's a combination of seeing some friends and going to the show the show's quite a hoot it's a little bit of carnival mixed with uh, RV stuff oh. you know all the gadgets all the crazy gadgets step oh, right yeah. up step right yeah. see the magic mop and all that kind of showman <laughs> stuff it's just hilarious I just can't <laughs> believe all the junk that they want to sell you for your RV it's kind what of weekend fun. is it what weekend is it? It's the two at last weekends of January. You, you can Google it. There's no, uh, mm -hmm. you don't have to pre-plan. You don't need a reservation. You just go to Quartzsite. You know, it's Indian land, the BLM mm -hmm. land, actually. And then uh, when you want to go to the show, you just go and pay the entrance. Um, and that's it. Yeah. I think I saw, it's I think it's I saw a Facebook post. Oh, yeah. They put up huge tents and everything. It's a big deal. I saw a Facebook post. Uh, they're expecting 750,000 people over the, the you know, 10 day period. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's amazing. You have to be self sufficient, you're warned, because so many people descend on this little town called Quartzsite. So things like water and groceries and stuff like that could be a challenge. 
So you're advised before you even get into that area to get all set up with food and water, et cetera. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, one day I'll go to Quartzsite, but not yet. Yeah. Well, it's true. I mean, it's a COVID year again, so unfortunately, yeah. but the last time I went, there were so many fun things to do. They had beer gardens, out, outdoor beer gardens, music, you know, barbecue, drink beer, you know, and the full gamut of RV people from the class A crowd to the real rough and in the van crowd all drinking beer together and, and the barbecue. It was kind of fun. It's kind of fun. Well, that sounds great. Unfortunately, it's tax season soon and I have to do AARP tax volunteer. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, it's not, not going to be in the cards for a few years. I see we have a name I don't recognize, Shirley, sitting in the bushes there. Shirley, do you want to come on and uh, tell us what you have? Share any comments? Shirley Reben. She's. Yep, we've got a 2018 uh, e track. Oh, uh, cool. CS Adventurous. It's our third <laughs> road track. We're uh, not doing much the last couple of years. We're, we're in Owen Sound, Ontario, and we're staying home because of COVID. Yeah, you've got a really nice area there that you could uh, oh, yeah. go out and wander around up, up through the peninsula there. And, and uh, Exactly. There well, that's, that's pretty well all we've done lately is day trips. And uh, we've, had some, we've had some health issues that have kept us at home, too, but... Uh, uh, no, it's fabulous just for day trips around the area or going to visit family. But we have also been coast to coast and used to go down to Florida. We've been down to California. So we've put our, we've put our miles on in the past. Oh, that's good. Uh, another uh, interesting tour would be, and uh, we've done this, is uh, uh, Manitoulin Island, going up to the island and uh, touring around there. It's kind of like a mini Newfoundland in a way. Yeah, well, we enjoy doing that, too. We have friends up. Well, we've been through Manitoulin many times up on the ferry. and We go to, go to Sudbury that way sometimes to, just to avoid the, the three-hour trip around. I have a couple questions that I've run into, or we have run into, and the one is the re, uh, refrigerator. We can't seem to keep the, uh, the uh, food frozen. Uh, with the type of unit that we've got, plus the fact that uh, we've, we've got a, uh, uh, the macerator, it, it seems to... There, we'll put the video on. Here we are. <laughs> Anyways, it, it, the macerator pump really gives us a, a problem in the fact that the, the valve or the whatever they call those units that come across, they seem to stick and... and uh, I, I think we're going to have to replace the macerator pump in order to make that uh, so it'll freeze up and so it'll release the waste in an easily pass. Do you know how old it is? How old your uh, pump is? Yeah, it's, it'll be, it's a 2018. So it's, so it's relatively new. And uh, <clears throat> as I was going to say, we... Um, we have a 2007 and our pump went on a trip out to California. What happens is the impeller, because it's rubber, sometimes deteriorates and it doesn't pump anything out. Hmm. So. We haven't had that problem, but we have had problems with the length of the, the, uh, uh, the, hose? Of the hose. And it, does, it, uh, it folds back in like a worm in hmm. underneath there. And it's very difficult to release. So we've had to take some of the length of that hose off in order to find room to put the rest of it in. Yeah, yeah can I, can I comment on that? Because I have a, I have a RS Adventures also, and I eliminated that problem. I had all the problems you just mentioned. Along the line there, mine's a 2008. I've had to replace the macerator pump. And then now it shoots out 13 gallons a minute. Okay, so that means it can empty the 25 gallon tank in two minutes, okay? As opposed to the 35 minutes when it wasn't working properly. Mm -hmm. So that was one problem. Those valves do stick. There's various reasons why the valves stick, okay? Not necessarily related to the macerator problem. 
Uh, these are things that are your maintenance issues, okay, that sometimes have to be replaced. Sometimes you just have to unstick them. But about the hose, I don't know if the others on the call realize this. It was an insane setup. I'm surprised it was still around in 2018 where you shove the hose in, okay? You've got this long hose and it's not flexible, okay? It was, uh, there isn't. <laughs> It was wrapped with some green thing that was supposed to help it slide, but it was a nightmare. And then shoving it in and pulling it out invariably caused it to crack. So now your waste hose is cracked and you tape it. Well, once you tape it, then for sure it's not gonna go into the narrow little hole. So some <laughs> clever person on one of the road trek things gave a very detailed description of what parts to buy to snip that. Okay, you take the hose till it's only about a foot extended from the body. And then you put these connections on and you buy one of these wonderful skinny collapsible hoses that you carry in a bag. Okay, you, you plug it in and unplug it and you use these very special industrial liquid connector things. They only cost a few dollars and they're absolutely leak proof. And my friend helped me do it because she's good at this stuff. And uh, so now what I do is when I'm done emptying the tanks, I have a, a, a plug that plugs up the hose really well. And then I, I flush out the hose and I carry it in a little bag. Okay, no more shoving in, shoving out. It's almost like a slinky, but not quite. But you know what? It extends to 16 feet. Oh, yeah, that's good. When it contracts, I put it in this little bag like this, okay? And I kept the original nozzle that Road Trek provided. And I put that on the end of the hose. And that's great because it fits in a lot of the waste tank openings. And then I have a donut in case the waste tank opening is huge. You put this donut in and then you put your little nozzle in there. And the Road Trek provided nozzle has the clear elbow at the end, which is also very useful to reuse. Anyway, I'm amazed that in 2018 that Rotrek was still trying to use that solution because it's a nightmare. Um, <laughs> I can give you, um, I, I'm pretty sure on my computer, I kept the list of parts. And when you see how easy this is, you know, you just put one of those uh, adjustable it's a circular thing with a screw on it that makes the, uh, tight, the fitting onto a hose really tight. You know, yeah. hose clamp. I mean, it, is, it took us 20 minutes to hook this up, and I never had that aggravation again of shoving. <laughs> shoving well, that is an aggravation, and and you have uh, you helped me an awful lot because <laughs> I will do. I'll, well, we'll I will rig that out. Doing that. No, okay, what, about so, the what about the refrigerator now? Is it 12 has... volt or evaporative cooling? What kind of, is it a 12 volt compressor or do you have the old fashioned uh, propane refrigerator? No, no, it's it's 12 volt. And yeah, it's 12 volt. Yeah, there's no propane. Yeah, no I don't know about those. Maybe Doug, you can comment on that. It's um. Yeah, I don't have any experience. It's... Mine is the three phase uh, fridge with the propane 12 volt and yeah. 110. So she, they've got a, a later vintage uh, I'm expecting, so uh, I'm not an expert on, on that, but uh, I, I don't know that 12 volt is really efficient in freezing or cooling. I always saw the 12 volt as more a maintaining role rather than a freezing role. You know, if your refrigerator is a three-way refrigerator where you can use 12- Ours is only two-way, 12 volt and 110. We don't have propane. Yeah, it's okay. 12 volt compressor. Do you notice if Correct. it uh, cools better using one method versus the other? Never quite figured that out. It seemed like it would cool for a while and then it would just suddenly shut off and things would thaw and then it would start cooling again. But I, uh, I couldn't really pin down exactly when that? it was doing it. Because I'm one of those guys that I tell everybody what, you know, they start to ask me about all the different uh, things that I say, well, at the front of the vehicle, there is an engine. <laughs> and usually at the rear of the engine, at rear of the vehicle, there is where it takes fuel. And I, anything in between, you've got people that work on those things. <laughs> right. Well, 
one of the ways of finding out your problem to see what source is causing the issue. Yeah, that is correct. And yeah. if uh, one works and the other one doesn't, concentrate yeah. on that first. Because I know with yeah. the three-way, there's three different ways that the heating yeah. um, of the ammonia is caused. And uh, yeah. we had an issue where the 110 power heating element was broke. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't sound like it's working properly because the limited exposure I've had to 12 volt compressor refrigerators is that they work and they use surprisingly little power. So, um, and I do want to give you, um, Shirley and company, I want to give you my email so that um, you can contact me and I'll take your email and I will send you that list of parts. Well, that'd be uh, super. Yeah, you're going to be shocked to see how simple it is to get rid of that awful thing and put in a very, <laughs> very useful 16-foot waste hose that works beautifully with the macerator because it's only like an inch. Okay, so let me, yeah. you have pencil and paper. I MP, do. MP, Mary yep. Peter. Okay, yep. JR. Yep. Five zero. Yes. At gmail.com. At gmail. That's mtjr 50 at, at gmail.com. Gmail and I will send you the list of components. Okay, well, mine's just Shirley at Rayburn.net. You can see the, that on the screen there. All in the lowercase letters. It doesn't matter. S Shirley. S H I R L E Y. L E Y. At Rayburn.net. R E A B U R N.net. Okay, dot net. Okay. Yeah. That'd be super. Yeah, and I bought all the parts on Amazon, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Nothing you. was expensive. It was all pocket change. It was very, really good. <laughs> you know, the, uh, the valve thing uh, with the valve sticking, uh, we had that problem. We don't have a macerator. We have just a gravity dump, but we still have those blade valves that you have to open. I assume you have to do that with a macerator, too. Correct. And, yeah. And... Uh, we discovered that, I read it somewhere on one of the forums, a quarter of a cup of vegetable oil down in the gray tank and in the black tank uh, before you go on the trip will lubricate that valve. And lo and behold, we did it the night before we left and a valve that was so sticky I could barely open it um, became like butter. It was just, it worked perfectly. Well, we'll try that because yes. we, we're having trouble. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't take a lot, about a quarter of a cup. Okay, thank you. We love our, we love our road trek. <laughs> we just love it. And it, it, it's a third bedroom in a lot of cases too. Uh. <laughs> got company staying or <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Okay, folks. Well, uh, it's been a good chat. I hope uh, you enjoyed uh, getting to know each other a bit better. And we've got some questions answered, so that's great. And uh, if anybody has any uh, thoughts on the topic for next month, uh, please do let me know. Um, we uh, we had a couple of things in, in the bill, but they haven't materialized. And uh, I know we got two or three more sessions planned with Jack. But uh, he's uh, out of commission with Wi-Fi until April by the sounds of it. So uh, if you want to present something or if anybody wants to uh, suggest a presentation, go ahead and, and, and try and organize it. We're, uh, we're needing your help here, folks, to get the, the topics and the presenters. So uh, any of that assistance is appreciated. So Thank uh, you very uh, much. What? Okay. What? See ya. Thank you, Doug. Thanks, everybody. Okay. okay, take care. Happy New Year. Yep, bye-bye.